Hello guys and girls, how's it going? Screezilla here and I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be doing a little technical showcase and talking about something that you most likely don't really think of very often. And that's the end of the gun. I'm going to be talking about muzzle brakes. Yay, excitement, I can hear you all cheering. Now, what exactly is a muzzle brake? A muzzle brake is designed to use the gas from a round to reduce a few things. Mainly it's there for stability or to reduce the kickback of the gun. So when you fire a shot, bang, the shot goes this way and it creates a force that goes this way because every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So we look inside the gun, so you fire your shot here, boom, and all that gas is exerted and pushes the shell out this way, but then the gas is also pushing back this way. So this is why cannon breaches are on a rail. So as you can see in this one for instance, the cannon, when fired it shoots back to this point here and then reserts itself. However there's still extra force involved in that, especially at the end of the breach. So what the breach is designed well, the muzzle breach uh, is designed for, muzzle brake, sorry, is to push some of that gas backwards or sideways to reduce the effect of the kickback. Now we're going to be looking at two different vehicles in this test run. The first is going to be without a muzzle brake, and this is the Super Jumbo with the 76mm M1 cannon. And the second is the standard Sherman, the, the sort of Super Sherman, so-called, uh, with the muzzle brake. Now these tanks are very similar. Um, the Jumbo, of course, is much heavier. Uh, very similar designs, though the Jumbo is a little bit larger. But the main thing is it's a much heavier vehicle. Whereas the standard Sherman is much lighter. And uh, with that, we'll find out why a brake helps. So, let's take this for a test drive. So this is without a muzzle brake. Now, muzzle brakes have been used for many years on many different weapons, and they can be used on things like machine guns. Um, on a machine gun, for instance, you may have vertical brakes uh, to help keep the gun down so you don't get lift. Um, there's lots of different uses for them, but the main use is just to help dampen recoil. There is also a secondary use as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire from the top here at this poor unsuspecting Panzer II. Boom, there goes the Panzer. But as you notice, the fire shoots out the gun from here. So we'll fire again. And as you see, we get a big fireball in this direction. Now we'll do, look from the side and we'll use this KV as a reference point. So we'll just get lined up just so we're at the back of it. So you can see that that shot is out of the screen. So we'll fire again, uh, just from looking sort of from the side. So you see there's a big burst of smoke. There's a big flame shooting forwards. Now, that isn't always good because it's going to give away your position. But it is expelling all that gas forwards. So it's getting it away from your vehicle. And all of that smoke sort of gets pushed forwards as well. So you get less um, smoke coming back to your vehicle. So when you're firing, say, uh, we'll just zoom in here. The smoke dissipates relatively quickly because it's being pushed forwards. Now we'll return to the Tanger and jump into the Sherman, and this time with the muzzle brake. Now the reason the Jumbo doesn't have a muzzle brake is because it weighs more than a planet. Um, being such a heavy vehicle, it doesn't really get pushed back much. It really doesn't affect it much. It makes it so the gun recoil itself is enough to really not worry the tank and fly it backwards. Whereas the Jumbo, sorry, the standard Sherman, as well as the Hellcat, needs a brake on it so it doesn't fly backwards. 
Now, as I say, we're going to use the Sherman here, not the Hellcat, um, just because I want to give a better view of this with the two vehicles, because they are very similar. Um, but you know that the Sherman, standard Sherman, is much lighter. So, let's take her for a test drive. And we will be in exactly the same spot. So we'll be able to use that KV as a sort of uh, indicator. We'll aim for that panzer and we'll look down this time. Now places to watch are at the sides here. Because the way the muzzle brake is designed you're going to get gas coming back here and also flying out the sides here and here. So that's fire. And as you saw we had a little bit of flame here and a bit of flame here and a bit of flame here. So let's go to the side, and again, we'll use that KV as reference. So, as you see, the muzzle flash is about the same size as that KV-1 there. Or KV-2, I think it's KV-1. So we do get a little bit of extra, but the majority of it's centred around this spot here. So you get a lot less muzzle flash, and again, we'll look sort of towards the front side shot. And fire off again. So you see, the smoke comes all the way around the tank this time. It doesn't come out as far to the front. So let's just fire off looking front forwards. And as you see, the fire comes out this way, this way, as well as the smoke dissipating this way and this way. Now, if we fire from our position here, you'll notice that the smoke doesn't dissipate as quickly. And that's because there's more smoke hanging around the air because you've got smoke in this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, and this direction. So it can cause a little bit of problem in that regard. Not too much, but a little bit. The big advantage of the muzzle brake though is you get a lot less recoil. So the tank rocks back a little bit, the gun moves in a little bit. I don't know if the x-ray shows us when this fires. Be interested to see how. No, it doesn't. Um, but you get a lot less recoil in that respect. So it helps the tank stay where it needs to be. Now, you'll be asking yourself, why don't tanks use muzzle brakes now? Why are they lost popularity? Muzzle brakes really started coming into effect in sort of the early 1940s. They, they were around in the First World War. They, they'd sort of been around for a long time. But on tanks, they only really started getting more popular in the mid to late war. Uh, if you look at the Russian tanks, for instance, um, you'll notice that the early Russian tanks, and even the, the T-34 is a good example of it, the T-34 doesn't get a muzzle brake, and it sort of remains muzzle brake free. T-44, again, remains muzzle brake free. The Russians didn't tend to use muzzle brakes, however the IS models did tend to get those muzzle brakes. KVs, not so much, but the IS, absolutely. But then, around, I think it's the IS-4? I'm having to think now. No, not the IS-4. Well, around the T-62, T-54 area, um, and of course the T-62, um, twos that sort of fix uh, 64s, they didn't have muzzle brakes again. So it lost popularity, it sort of went popular, popular, not popular. It's not to say it's not used in modern vehicles, uh, for instance the uh, PT-76 uses the muzzle brake as well as the Object 906, things like that. The SU-100P uses the muzzle brake because it's such a big gun uh, on such a light tank, it needs it to keep sort of stable. However, the Object 120, it has a muzzle brake, but it's a not as an effective muzzle brake, so to say. It's a bit of a vented port muzzle brake. And the muzzle brakes start to look different as we go on in the future. Now, there are two reasons muzzle brakes lost popularity. The first reason, we'll use the... We'll use the IS-2 as an example here. Let's take it out for a test drive quickly. Now this is a big old gun, 122mm gun. 
and with that you get a lot of gas coming out. So we'll drive along here very slowly. We're going to drive up to this uh, Panzer II here and use it as an example. We're going to be nice to it though, we're not going to blow it up. Slowly we'll trundle along. As you can see, it's got a similar muzzle brake to that of the Sherman. Um, a little bit hard to see because we can't really get too much of the gun. Side and rear facing muzzle vents. Sorry, I've just got a hiccup there. So we're going to sit just behind this guy with our gun facing towards the back of his uh, commander's hatch. And we're just going to fire. Now what happens when we fire is the gas is expelled to the left and to the right. Now in game that doesn't make any difference. But in reality, what would happen to this Panzer II is it would just have a massive burst of gas flying through that commander's hatch and probably turning that poor commander into a fine paste. So we'll watch again. So, this is the biggest flaw of the muzzle brakes. When you're firing a gun without a muzzle brake, all of the energy is sent forwards. So, you know not to stand in front of the gun, because that's a bad idea. However, when you're in a battlefield, you might be standing to the left or the right of a gun. Or, you might be in a friendly tank, say, parked left or right of the gun. And what happens is that gas is expelled at a very high speed, and it's very, very warm as well. And you don't really want to be standing close to it, because what will happen is it will either turn you into a very hot, very fiery mess, or it will blow part of you off. The other problem is when you're in a tank to the side of another tank is it will cause damage, it will cause heat damage, it will cause um, concussive damage to the tank, it can blow bits off, like loose bits and bobs, to a light vehicle for instance, if the ASU-57 was parked next to that tank and it fired, the ASU-57 would likely go womp and flip over. And that's one of the biggest problems with muzzle brakes, and that's why they kind of fell out of favour. However, the other reason they fell out of favour was because of new ammunition. The thin stabilised rounds, such as the thin stabilised high explosive anti tank rounds, or the thin stabilised discarding sabre rounds, or discarding sabre rounds in general, have problems with muzzle brakes. I want modifications, don't I? So, with a discarding sabre round, what happens? is inside the round is the main warhead. On the outside is extra bits to get more gas for it. But what can happen is when it goes through a muzzle brake, those little bits can break off just as it's going through the muzzle brake and then they get caught. For thin stabilized ammunition, what can happen sometimes is as it's leaving the muzzle, the fins can just pop out and if you've got a, if you've got a muzzle brake on there, the fins can catch and it can break them off. So, you don't see modern tanks with that uh, muzzle brake very often. The only real exception to that is the Object 120 here, which has a slightly different muzzle brake. Now this is more of a vented port than a muzzle brake. Now as you can see, it's the same diameter as the gun. Um, this muzzle brake is, is basically just the end of the gun. But what you have here are vented ports. Now these are far less effective, but they give a similar sort of, um, a similar way of working. So again, I'll just show you in the test range of how that works. Now another part of the muzzle brake being sort of not used as much anymore is also a muzzle brake is very loud and noisy. So we'll just, try and get to a good spot here and we'll fire off a shell 
So as you can see there, we get a little bit of flash coming to the left and right, but the majority of it sort of stays through the front. It's a bit hard to see with the Tehran because it's a big old, big old gun. So the majority of it still goes out the front, but you do get a little bit coming from the sides. So, that's why muzzle brakes have fallen out of fancy. They can be useful, and they still are used in some vehicles. Majority of the time it is uh, artillery vehicles that use them, such as, I think it's the Paladin, uh, one of the British artillery pieces. Um, they still use muzzle brakes, but they're far less popular than they used to be. Okay guys, well I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it somewhat useful. Um, Oh, wait, one more thing, because I did just forget to say it, I think I was saying it. Muzzle brakes also add a lot more noise, and they make the gun noisier by about 5-10%. to 10 So, again, that can be problematic. Tanks, they're going to make a lot of noise anyway, but that extra bit of noise doesn't help. Okay, there we go, I remembered what I was going to say. Alrighty, I hope you found this interesting, and I hope you learnt something. Uh, if you have, let me know in the comments below. Love to hear your opinions. I did have a bit of a script with this one, but I'm very sorry for my stammering. I'm, well, I don't think I managed to stammer, but I was trying not to stammer the whole video. Um, I probably have said um a few times, though, just because I'm trying to get my words out properly without stammering. So, do hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a like, comment, let me know what you thought, let me know if you have learnt something, and I will see you next time. Thank you all, and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.